Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and it's Valentine's Day. Obviously, it's a great opportunity to have a nice date or to spend quality time with someone we cherish, but at the same time, events like this usually carry a huge risk of eating something that we're not supposed to eat, breaking our diet, uh, having other infringements of our body transformation routines, our workouts, and so on. So I'm definitely not perfect. Moreover, I have to confess that in most of the cases I break my diet uh, because of uh, going on some dates. Uh, usually it's either dates or going to some trips or conferences where food is provided uh, and almost forced on you the food that you're not supposed to eat. Like I usually stick to low-carb diets and on, on major conferences and, and on most of the dates there are some desserts, there are some sweets, muffins, uh, very nice treats and it's very very difficult to uh, not to have this kind of food so uh, I guess slipping so many times kind of makes me an expert so I feel like it is a good time to reflect on different strategies and different scenarios uh, related to Valentine's Day I can envision five possible scenarios and I'm sorry for the calluses I do work out uh, I will start with the very first one which is pretty much the situation when you decide to live your life and completely ignore Valentine's Day. What you do is you just simply have your workout if it was planned, have your normal meals as you would normally have, you don't break your diet, you definitely stick to your rules and you are becoming one day closer to your ultimate goal. Obviously in this case scenario you are likely to be feeling like you're missing out because you are. And it's very hard to call this scenario ideal because you are missing out and it is only ideal from the standpoint of sticking to your diet. And there are other aspects of your life that you would like to address. The second scenario is actually ideal. It is a perfect scenario when you have your beloved one, uh, you are already in some sort of a good uh, supportive relationship when both of you know each other's plans, each other's diet, uh, workout plan and you're supporting each other so that on days like that you can definitely exchange some gifts but you also can work out maybe together you can have your dinner and at a place uh, where they serve the stuff that you can eat so you will not break your diet you'll have good time you'll have uh, the good the best from both worlds you'll have a diet you'll have your nutrition you'll have fun and you will not break uh, any of your routines. And definitely both of you can congratulate each other with having another day of being true to your goals. Unfortunately, this scenario doesn't apply to everyone. There are people who don't have uh, such a wonderful partner or don't have a partner at all. So these people, unless they want to stick to the first scenario when they don't do anything, likely they would be willing to go on a date. And the next three scenarios will involve actual dates. I will go over them in the order of uh, diminishing compliance with your diet. Uh, one important thing that will apply to all three of them is that I believe that no matter what your date plans are, you can always find time for a, at least a brief workout. Most of the people are working like 9 to 5, 8 to 4, so you're finishing your work at 4 to 5. Maybe you need some time to commute, but most of the dates happen at, at least at 7, sometimes at 8, 9 p.m. So you definitely have uh, 2, 3, sometimes even 4 hours between the end of the working day and your date. So you can definitely squeeze in a nice workout and even have enough time to groom, to take a shower, to put a nice suit or dress and go out and have fun. So the first date night scenario or the scenario number 3 in my overall list is a scenario when you're going on a date but it's definitely not the first date you already have gone on a couple of dates with this person at least you know each other a little bit and you know each other well enough to uh, be able to arrange for a date at one of your places ideally it should be your place so you can definitely cook you can actually have a cooking date where you will gather at one of your places and have a nice dinner that will you will prepare together but the whole idea of this scenario is that you have full control over the food that you're gonna serve. So you're gonna plan it, you're gonna cook whatever uh, fits your diet and you're gonna serve it 
and you, you can go with some exotic dishes, you can go with something really, really interesting, you can impress the person with your cooking skills, with your presentation skills, and in the end of the day, you will be able to stick to your diet. I believe that this scenario is actually quite good, but in many cases, it might not be the fifth date, it might be the first date, you might go on a date with someone who doesn't feel comfortable coming to your place, or you're not... Uh, at that point in your relationship when you are, when you can invite someone into your place. So effectively you have to go to some restaurant and restaurants are a little bit problematic. They are kind of an uncharted territory, but not everything is lost. You definitely still have a lot of control over the situation. What I mean by that is that you can definitely plan your dinner date. You can call several places, uh, see what they have on their menu, pick the place which menu is the closest to your diet. For example, if you're a vegetarian, you would be open to go to some vegetarian restaurants. If your partner or your date is not vegetarian, you can go to some place where they serve plenty of vegetarian foods and you can definitely have whatever you want. You, you can have several options there that will fit your diet. If you are, say, a carnivore, definitely you won't go to a vegetarian place. You would likely go to uh, some steakhouse and you'll definitely be able to order something that you really really like something traditional something that will not make you look like you are a very weird person who has very odd dietary choices and it will be a nice venue for your date this scenario wasn't too bad either but we have the fifth scenario which unfortunately I personally find myself in very frequently it is a scenario when you're going on some spontaneous first date you just found someone, I don't know, on Tinder, on Bumble, uh, or you haven't seen a person for a while, you were planning to uh, go on a date and you didn't and now it's the first date and she has or he has some preferences and uh, you want to honor them so you go to some random restaurant and you end up or you anticipate to end up in a place where you will be literally forced to have some food that you definitely don't want to eat and don't get me wrong it might be a very cool food very nice stuff there is a nice restaurant next to the place where i work i totally love it but unfortunately almost nothing there is low carb uh, and uh, i love every single plate there so, and i quite often go on dates there and it's actually very difficult for me to stick to my diet whenever i go there with someone I know that this scenario sounds pretty grim in terms of sticking to your diet, but there are still several things I try to practice, several things that might help you to be true to your diet or at least not to break it really badly. So what I would suggest you do is, first of all, prepare yourself. Know that, you know, I'm going to this place. You might study the menu, you might find uh, some meals that are more or less close to whatever your diet is. Uh, another thing that you can do is uh, you can simply not eat anything or reduce your caloric intake throughout the day. So you skip your breakfast, your lunch, you're coming there, you're hungry, your glucose levels are low. Uh, and uh, even if you're on a low carb diet, for example, uh, you can still have some carbs, minimal amount, preferably. Uh, with the foods that you have picked and the spike of glucose and insulin that you will get throughout this date won't be too high. Another thing you can do is something that I have already mentioned. It is working out. Make sure that you work out maybe like an hour or two hours before your date so that your body gets into this anabolic state. You have just uh, used up lots of glucose, your glycogen storage is low. There are actually quite a few studies showing that a post-workout meal that contains protein and carbs is actually very good for muscle building, for protein synthesis. So, you know, if you're going to some place where you're anticipating to have this kind of nutrients, and even if it is going kind of against your diet, you can still use it to your advantage. A couple of other things you can do is uh, limiting the amounts of food and the amounts of alcohol that you are going to consume. I think that both things are quite self-explanatory. Limiting the amount of food you consume limits the negative impact of this food on your diet if it is something that is beyond or out of your uh, cookbook. And in the vast majority of cases, consuming more than one or two drinks 
is usually a bad idea because it will break your diet, will break you out of ketosis. If you're sticking to some sort of a low calorie diet, consumption of alcohol will automatically mean that you're consuming lots of calories because one gram of ethanol contains seven kilocalories which is a large number, almost like a gram of fat. And finally, if you're watching your nutrition because you're trying to build muscle, alcohol will definitely uh, ruin a lot of anabolic effects of the hormones that you have produced during your workout. Another important thing that you can do in this scenario, even if you didn't plan for such a date, uh, even if you didn't plan for the infringement of your diet, what you can do is you can restart your diet very strict one the following day have a recovery day reduce your caloric intake stop consuming carbs if you're on a low carb diet uh, do something have an extra workout to spend a little bit more energy and make sure that all these nutrients that you've consumed over the course of your date are kind of burnt uh, and used up as uh, fuel or building blocks rather than being converted into fat Finally, the last but definitely not the least thing on my list is something that can be applied to all these scenarios. Please do not stress. When you're stressed, you've got a spike of cortisol, it affects your sleep, it affects your metabolism, it brings up uh, glucose, it uh, pretty much blocks all anabolic effects from your workouts. So even the good nutrients that you have consumed over the course of your date uh, they will not be properly assimilated into your body in presence of cortisol. You don't want it. You don't want to put you in an even more disadvantageous position. Uh, what you really want to do is you want to minimize the negative effects of your date on your nutrition and workout plan. And cortisol doesn't help at all. So in general, it's always up to you what to do, whether you want to uh, spend this night on your own, whether you want to go on a a uh, perfect date with your long-term partner or you want to go on some nice date in some uh, new restaurant no matter what you do don't stress enjoy it life is short nothing is perfect there will be quite a few uh, chances and situations in your life when you will be about to break your diet uh, about to violate certain rules it is okay you don't want to stress too much about these things they will happen over and over and over and over again. Your goal is to make sure that they don't happen too frequently, to be really disruptive in terms of your body transformation. And I really want you to enjoy them. I want you to enjoy your date. I want you to enjoy Valentine's Day. And I want you to enjoy your life and your body transformation. That was it for today. Please subscribe to my channel. Check out my website, drsamshealth.com. We've got quite a few tools for you there. And a special request for this video, along with likes, comments, questions, I would like you to make a special comment uh, in which you will describe how your Valentine's night went. I'm really curious to see how your Valentine's night was. And I think it's a perfect time to wrap up this video and to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. Thank you and see you soon.